Hello everyone. We're going to be installing PyCharm with Anaconda. This tutorial is Windows, Mac, and Linux compliant. So this tutorial is split up into three sections roughly. The first part, we're going to be installing PyCharm. And the second part, we're basically just going to be testing our installation by making a project and creating and running Python files. So the last part of the tutorial is kind of the boring part which is basically installing additional packages, um, environment management, you know, having a different environment for each project if you need to, um, and then Java issues, okay? Um, the reason why we go over Java issues is pretty simple. Um, PyCharm is made with Java, or it was made with Java. Um, so basically you need Java 8 for it, and I'll leave a link for that um, at the end of the tutorial in case you run into Java issues. Um, and as always, um, please feel free to ask questions either here or below the YouTube video. And what I'm looking at right now is my blog post, and that'll be down below the YouTube video. Okay? So the first part of this is since we're using Anaconda, you have to install Anaconda. So you can either download and install Anaconda from the official site, um, and then download and install Anaconda, you know, this way. Um, for Mac, Windows, and then different Linux distributions. Um, if you don't know what to do after downloading Anaconda, I have Anaconda tutorials um, for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And you can follow step by step. Um, basically, you download Anaconda and then, you know, install it. Okay? So, next thing. Um, we have to download the community edition of PyCharm. So I have a link to JetBrains' website. They're the people that make PyCharm. Since I don't want to spend money, I'm going to download the community edition. Okay. It'll take a second. I'll say keep. Okay. Okay. Briefly, I'm going to go over a small difference between uh, Windows and Mac and, I guess, Ubuntu. Okay. So, with Mac, basically, when I click this, it'll open up a screen like this where you have to drag PyCharm to the Your Applications folder. Um, and the installation is, you know, pretty simple from there. And I'll go actually go through the installation. Um, for Windows, it's simpler. You'll basically, when you download this file, or something similar, you'll click it, and then you go through the basic installation on all defaults, except for I would highly recommend uh, if there's a box that says download install JRE by JetBrains, it's a custom uh, Java runtime environment by JetBrains, and it just makes dealing with Java issues easier, okay? Anyway, so first things first, you click on whatever you just downloaded. I'm going to move PyCharm to my Applications folder, and this is only something you do for Mac. Okay. So I have PyCharm here. I'm going to double click it and open it. One sec. Okay. Okay, let me delete an old project. I didn't delete um, some configurations from before. One sec. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let me reopen PyCharm. Okay, so to test your installation, what you want to do is create a new project. Okay, so this is the part where you can select Anaconda as your interpreter. So if you don't know where Anaconda is on your system, because chances are you just don't off the top of your head, um, and if you have to enter the path yourself, you can do add local, and then you know search your system for Anaconda. So what I typically do if I don't know where my Python is or my Anaconda, I do which conda, and my Anaconda is going to be. Um, this is the, takes place of the tilde, which is this squiggly thingy over here. 
Um, and then I have Anaconda, Finn, and then Python. Um, I should also note very briefly that you can also create content environments here and virtual environments. Okay. So after selecting Anaconda as your interpreter, um, you have to name your project. So let's just do tutorial, uh, YouTube, and click create. Oh, you can also do which Python, by the way, um, if you don't want to use Anaconda. Anyway, um, chances are your Python and your Anaconda, which commands are going to land up similar anyway. OK? So let me scroll down so you can follow on the blog as well. OK? So the first thing you have to do is you right click your project folder, you click on new, and then Python file. I'm going to call this fizzbuzz. Okay. Um, if you don't know what fizzbuzz is, um, I have a separate blog post that you can click on. And fizzbuzz is just a very common interview question that I've gone asked recently. And it's kind of funny. Um, I interviewed for a data science position and they asked me like basic coding stuff. Um, so it's always good to know a lot of different things. Anyway, so I have some code here, copy and paste it. And the next thing you want to do to make sure that your installation works is you want to run some code just to see that it works, right? Um, if for some reason you can't run your code yet, um, chances are um, you just installed um, PyCharm and it'll take a little bit of time. Um, you'll have some processes running here. Um, let them finish and then you'll be able to run your code. Okay? Okay, so I just ran Fizzbuzz. Um, I should also note that you can also have a interactive Python console by going to tools and then Python console. And you can just, you know, do interactive stuff. Okay. So that's it for this mini part of the tutorial. Um, I'm going to briefly go over installing additional packages. So um, whenever you have some sort of Conda environment or using Anaconda, a lot of times you have to download additional packages. So with default Anaconda, I don't have Seaborn, which is a plotting library. So I can you can do um, Conda install Seaborn. And this is in terminal. Um, I also have a link if you want to install packages um, through PyCharm itself. Um, I find this is better because it's a lot more direct. It's basically just faster and it's less error prone than installing things through PyCharm. Okay. And then after you install something, a good idea is to close PyCharm and to open it back up to your project um, to use your package. I find it's more reliable. Anyway, so if you have a lot of different projects, and you switch between you know many different projects all the time. Um, a good thing to learn and get into is environment management. Um, so I had a project for school um, that was in Python two, and then another project for school that was in Python three. So I learned about different Conda environments, um, and the only way that it really changes things. Let me just close this. Um, I'll show you via command line. Is Sometimes you just want a project that's in a different version of Python. So you can you know, deal with different conda commands to create new projects or new environments for your projects. And I find this pretty good because um, even sometimes with different projects, you have different versions of you know, pandas or numpy. Um, and it can be you know, quite a bit of a hassle um, to only have you know, one environment for all your code. Um, for all your different projects. Okay, and if you don't know about that and you want to learn, um, I have a separate tutorial that you can click on over here. And it's just environment management with Conda and all these different commands. Okay, um, and very briefly before you go, um, if you have Java issues, let me know if you can't solve them. Um, I have a link uh, to download Java 8. Um, you do need Java to use PyCharm. 
Um, and that's it. Um, please subscribe if you can. I would appreciate it. Um, that's it. Bye.